Um, so I recently completed one year studying Greek and I was debating whether I wrote a blog post or made a video and which language I made the video. So I'm just gonna try some different things and see what works out. But yeah, I've been studying Greek for a whole year now. It's, I, I'm, it's been a little late. I completed one year some weeks ago. And yeah, so this is a progress update video or whatever that's supposed to be. I, I don't actually know what people do in this progress video. So I'm just gonna randomly talk about some stuff related to my Greek studies. I'm gonna start with why Greek, um, because that's some things, um, that's a thing some people ask me about, especially Greek people. Um, but yeah, so why Greek? Um, I don't know. I, I don't really have a reason for picking languages. They usually just fall upon me for some reason. They just happen somehow. And for Greek, what happened was that I was going to travel to Greece for a second time. And I, I knew I loved the country already. I, I knew people spoke English with no issue. I know that as a tourist, I wouldn't have any problems to go by just with English, but I was like, well, why not? I mean, I was going this time for an extended period. So the first time I went to Greece, I went, I, I went to Athens for like three days. I didn't go around in the islands or anything. And this time it was a more thorough uh, trip. So it was supposed to be like a whole month in Greece. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna try to study at least some basic vocabulary and you know, you know, just politeness, you know, try to be kind and friendly and things like that. And I did have to, the opportunity to, to use Greek there a few times. Um, you know, simple stuff, you know, I'm waiting for a bus forever, the bus is not coming, and I start wondering if something is wrong, then I turn out to the lady next to me, oh, you know, do you know if this bus actually comes here? She was like, yeah, it's just, you know, taking its time. I was like, oh, okay, I, I, I know how that works. I'm from Brazil. I, okay, there's nothing wrong with them. I can just keep waiting. Um, so yeah, I actually had the opportunity to use it. It was fun. And in my head, you know, I was, it was going to be like this. Okay, I'm just going to do this for fun for a little bit. And, and then I'm going to travel and that's it. And then after I'm back from Greece, after I'm back home, then I can just forget about it and go back to the main languages that I study, right? That in, in my case were German and I was thinking about starting Spanish. Um, so yeah, so it's like, yeah, yeah, I'm just, I'm just gonna put it on the side. It's just gonna be for fun for this short period of time. And that's, and then like nothing of that happened because first, um, I just loved Greece so much and you know I I had so many nice experiences there and I was having fun with the language too it was way more interesting than I thought it would be and not as difficult as I thought it would be I mean it is difficult so I'm gonna now talk a little bit about what I'm thinking about Greek so far like what have I seen in this year and what opinions have I formed about learning the Greek language? So just to make it clear, like full disclosure, I can't speak Greek yet. I'm not like this intense polyglot who studies like, you know, hours and hours a day and, you know, or like I'm university student and undergrad who is like studying languages and doing this as like part of my job or anything. So no, I, I study this on my free time um, and I just use whatever time I can find. And for me, it's like a distraction. You know, I am tired doing not much. I might as well, you know, spend some time on some app or, you know, if I'm gonna read a book, I might as well pick a book that is in, in one of my target languages. You know, I try to optimize where I can to fit in content that, um, that's appropriate for me, my target language. So yeah, so I, I, I just learn for fun. I don't invest 
huge amounts of time in, in Greek or any of the other languages that, um, that I'm learning. So I can't speak it yet. Uh, I, I've had some conversations, like I think the most meaningful conversations were the ones I just had at the Polyglot Gathering Conference because they had like these chat rooms um, that were like video calls and they were like study calls and everyone there was you know also not a native um, Greek speaker and everyone was very patient and they would try to elicit a response from from me and I actually managed it quite well so I, I'm very happy with with my results but I, I don't think I would be ready to be like released in the wild and survive with with Greek but it's okay I'm still satisfied I'm still making progress if you want to see more or less how I speak I have um, on the channel a playlist with my um, daily record yourself challenge which I'm not doing daily for me it's a weekly thing um, so I have my Greek videos there um, so yeah so I've been doing this for a year I haven't gone very far but I've gone far enough to form some opinions about it and what I've seen so far is that it's not insanely difficult as it looks like because in some ways it's very similar to German so I'm also learning German so that for me that's what's easier to compare with but you know some of the things happen in both languages they both have three genders they both have you know, many different cases and very intense declinations. Um, but also both of these languages have something that favor, which is the very, um, I forgot the word now, but um, uh, consistent. It's a very consistent um, spelling to sounds mapping. So even though there are some sounds in Greek that are different, uh, they are difficult to pronounce. I still have some problems with delta and uh, ni plus tau, um, taf. I don't know how you're supposed to say it in, in in English. Anyway, in Portuguese we say tau, but anyway, um, so there are some combinations of letters that. I still find difficult. Um, I have received feedback on my videos that my lambdas are supposed to be softer, that my lambdas are too hard. I, I don't know how to make L, uh, an L sound softer. So there are so many things that I still need to learn regarding pronunciation. But at least um, I don't think a lot of it is marked. Um, I can. Uh, there is not many conflicts or things that are too similar. Um, the accent rule is very straightforward. Um, the accentuation and the accent and the diacritics mark too. Like both of these things are, are straightforward. The conjugations of the verbs are not difficult. They are very regular. So even though some of the grammar, so this is where I'm going to start finding the differences with, with German. Even though some of the structure uh, is as complex as German, the advantage of Greek here is that it is very regular and easy to find out what you're supposed to do, which is not in, in German. In um, it's very easy to know the gender of a word in Greek, even when you don't know making a guess is more likely to yield you the correct answer. Whereas in German, I, I honestly gave up. There are no rules. Uh, there are some rules and they apply sometimes and there is many exceptions and um, so it starts if you just assume it's random and 
always have the pair of the gender and the noun in your head, that's much better than try to figure it out. Whereas with Greek, you can figure it out. And when you can't, if you just go with like the whisper in your hands, you are likely to find the correct one. And given that if you make a gender mistake, you are less likely to fuck up the rest of the sentence and everything just sounds horrible, uh, even though there are declinations. And they are also not as difficult to remember because um, they are different from each other. So in German, you start seeing repetitions of things that in one case they are used for a different gender, but in this case they are used for this gender and they have like articles that they have pronouns that look the same and they have like these random situations with the prepositions, um, like some prepositions will will ask for dative and some for accusative and it's very hard to know uh, like they just are like that and we just have to know whereas in in Greek it's it's a lot more straightforward so it looks as complex but learning it is a lot easier than German given that it's of course still a very difficult language so it's still much more difficult learning it than was learning French for me of course not just for uh, vocabulary because French vocabulary was easy for me because my native language is Portuguese but the grammar as well of French is almost the same as Portuguese I didn't have any difficulty in establishing parallels there so in in Greek even it's so it's more difficult than French and easier than German and it's just very pleasant because it turns out that even though Greek is an isolated language, that we have lots of influence from Greek in all of the languages we speak. So we start seeing these words that we recognize. So, okay, we don't have a shared vocabulary, but we kind of do. Because, you know, and either in science um, and biology, you have like these roots of words that come from Greek, or if I don't know, just day-to-day -day things that look exactly the same, like have words like porta, which is the same for Portuguese and Greek, it means door. And for me, that was like a random surprise because I was expecting this to be present only in Romance languages and that in Greek I would find only like the scientific roots, but, you know, not normal not common day-to-day -day words and there is lots of day-to-day -day words words that are that are similar um what else yeah i think that's pretty much it like it sounds very nice it has a certain rhythm to it um the vocabulary is feels like a very nice puzzle the culture and the text that you've got access to when you're reading Greek are very interesting, especially if you want to learn more about Greece. Um, and speaking on it, I'm gonna now talk a little bit about the material that I use to read Greek, because one of my favorite methods of studying is um, is reading. And I, I do this with all of the languages that I study. I try to introduce reading as early as possible. I didn't have the opportunity to do that with all of the languages because some of them I only I already had some level of the language um, when I started, you know, just just reading as as a method. But yeah, so Greek was something I started from scratch and that I wanted to read from the beginning. So I found this series of books from. They are from a publisher called Color Greece, and they're like my favorite thing. They're my favorite thing ever. They, first, they are very beautiful, and I don't know, they're useful. So I actually, so this is the first one I got. It's called Color Atoms, and it's, in essence, it's a coloring book, but I don't use it as a coloring book. 
I did color some of the pages, but this this one was a coincidence. I was like, I don't color this, but and then the first page I opened, it's, but like the rest of them, I I I haven't colored. Um, I I used it as a study book because it has like this one page text and it's a bilingual text. So first they have an English version and then they have a Greek version. And as you can see, I do lots of doodling and note taking, right? So I'm going to explain to you how this works. So one way that I really like studying is that uh, I cover the English text. I don't look at it. I don't read it first. I just pretend it doesn't exist. And I go straight to the text in Greek. And then I highlight the words that I know and the words that I don't know but that I think I know or you know that I can guess through the context that I somehow can understand what they mean but I've never seen this word before or you know don't remember that I've seen this word before but I, I don't actually know what they mean but I you know I can it gives me some hint so I highlight that with a different color and then I take notes of primarily those words or maybe some of the words that I don't know and then I read the English text and then I try to guess what they mean and then I make my little dictionary and then I review it from time to time this is why I have multiple notes because they are all from uh, different dates that I went back to this text and um, you know this is just vocabulary review I it's somewhat similar to what's done in the gold list methods except that in this case I don't have like a gold list notebook I do it all with like notes on the on the book itself and the thing is that the these stories they are self-sufficient right each page in this case this is a travel book so each of these pages is about a different um, touristic area, some cultural aspect, a particular dish or food that is traditional, some place to go, a neighborhood, a little historic nugget. So, um, yeah, each of them is, is their own story. So it's perfect for me to just like open it in isolation and study a little bit and call it done. And I, I don't actually, you know, need to keep tabs or like I'm not going to lose myself in the story. But at the same time, there is a lot of vocabulary repetition um, because, you know, there is a team to the book. It's a tourist guide. So there's lots of things that you end up coming um, coming across. So there are different ways to learn vocabulary for reading. And one of them is extensive reading. And the other one is intensive reading. And this is not the extensive one. This is the intensive one. And for me, and I, I don't have a lot of time, I find it more useful because to learn vocabulary with extensive reading, you have to read a lot. It's not like one book. One book doesn't do any tricks. Uh, you have to read a lot more than one book to do a very good learning for reading and it does work and it is superb and it is amazing and you're gonna have lots of new words but especially in the beginning I prefer I prefer doing this and another way of calling it as thematic reading because we're reading within a theme and then yes, and then you get all of this vocabulary that starts repeating and then you start learning. And it's also a lot more rewarding because by the end of the book, you start being able to understand whole texts. Even if you miss a word here and there, it becomes a lot more understandable. And yeah, so I love it. I love it so much. And they have many other books so this one I bought in Athens markets when I was traveling there. Then um, this one is about Greek herbs and I got it as a gift from a wonderful friend of mine. And I did, you know, the same process. 
Um, and this other three I just bought online. So this is also a travel guide. This is from Crete. And this is one about the Greek cuisine. And this one is about Greek folk art. So I just started working on the Greek cuisine one. And then, you know, when I finish, I'll pick one of these two. So I'm still going for this, for this material. But yeah, this two I already finished. And I just started this one and you know it makes me very happy it's like an activity that I don't have to think about a lot don't have to prepare some lesson just like today I'm gonna read a new text and so and there is you know a lot of them lines up so I don't have to worry about finding um, reading content for me which is which is very good besides this uh, what I use for learning in terms of grammar or regular textbooks. So I have this free textbooks. Oh my god, I just dropped everything on the floor. Um, okay, never mind. I have this free textbooks. Uh, I started with this one, which is the Talk Greek book from the BBC. It's a very short introductory book. It's the one I used before I went to Greece. I finished it after I came back. And um, yeah, it's a very basic Greek. It's not very complete, but you know, it does teach a lot. It gives you a very nice introduction to the language. It's very useful. It's a very um, well prepared material. It's pleasant. Um, yeah, it's very good. I think from these three, this top Greek one is, is my favorite. And then there is this Vichy Sprach course, which is a German book uh, to teach Greek. I got that because I was like, oh yeah, I'm trying to gonna do that lettering thing where I use materials in one language to learn the other. So in this way, I can do a little bit of German uh, infusion in my brain while I am studying Greek. It's not as confusing as it sounds because it would already be confusing in a way because German is the most, um, I don't know, it's, it's the weaker language I have in my head. It's like the fresher one. Um, so con some confusion was going to happen anyway. But yeah, it's it's a good book. It doesn't have a lot of exercises. It's mostly dialogues and repetition and reading. Uh, it's good. It's it's not very strictly structured in terms of grammar, but they do offer um, grammar in every chapter. And then there is this um, phrase book. Uh, which I haven't I haven't gone through yet, but it's also like her German to Greek uh, material. And what I like about using phrase books is not the phrase book part, but it's that usually they have some section somewhere where they have a very short grammar review, and it's very useful for reference. So. Yeah, I, I, I go to this section of the phrase book quite often. Um, and that's it in terms of physical materials. In terms of digital materials and apps, I use mainly four apps. First one is, of course, Polygloss, which is the app I'm making. So I use that to use Greek with other people. It's written form, but it's all it's going to another human, um, so it's not about learning grammar, it's more about practicing producing language. For learning quick vocabulary, I do use Duolingo, so they, they have Greek and they have grammar tips on the web version, the mobile version doesn't have that. So it's, it's good for, you know, Acquiring some basic vocabulary that you're going to use when reading other stuff. I don't think Duolingo is any helpful in isolation, but when you combine that with all of 
your other material that you know it works quite well I use also link um, it's very good for reading um, you can mark the words it gives me some sense of achievements it's very practical the stories are very well organized they don't have a lot of material for Greek but the material they do have seems enough for me and there was one more app what was it oh yeah the last one is not an app is um, YouTube channel which is Greek Pod 101 so one thing that I use from them which is to practice listening so they have like this listening practice so I already went through all of their absolute beginner series and I'm starting their only beginner <laughs> series and it's 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 very good for practicing listening and I couldn't notice a very clear um, difference between when I when I started um, using their their videos and by the end of the last series like I could understand almost everything and yeah it's very it's very good to to see to observe this progress and I really like their videos they have lots they're very short they're like two minutes or so and they first offer a video without subtitles and then with subtitles and then you can make a comparison and then you can see what was the thing that you missed so yeah in terms of online materials i think that's it and also i think that's it for the rest of the video as well <laughs>